Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA. Back with the crew, got Chris, Good morning. Kyle, Silent Paul. <laughs> and we are headed up to Steve Strobes again, Pure Vision Design. I say this probably every time we shoot a Steve car, but this is one of my favorite Strobe cars. It's a beautiful Charger. I can't remember the year. I think this is a 68 Charger, if I remember correctly. But it is a stunner. Can't wait to get into this one, get into the details with the builder of the car. So hold on, man, because here we go. Hi. I'm Steve and I'm on his show. <laughs> In case any of you guys don't know who this is, this is my buddy Steve Strope. So the idea behind this thing is obviously drag racing's hip way before 67, 68. Sure. And Dodge is way into it. They've already been promoting their 426 Hemi in super stock. They've been cleaning up. So they obviously know and already know drag racing is a part of their hookup for sure. selling their street performance cars. Of course, yeah. So in 67, they're throwing together this new Charger, right? And the one what if is, what if they didn't change the interior? And they kept they it four bucket seats. They just what goes on around they, it. They changed the outer body to arguably the best looking muscle car ever. For sure. I am not a quote, people that have known of my career. I was known as the Mopar guy. Right. I was, me and Matt Delaney were the two guys who started pro touring Chrysler Mopar. Right. Whether we want that award or not, we, we were by default. Right. So this though is the most purpose designed, masculine looking muscle car. Car, yeah. And you could argue like the 69 Fastback Mustang. Ah, but that's a pony car technically. It's not a muscle car. Yeah. So 67, right? We've got a prototype that's got the four bucket seats in it, the 66 interior. The long console the long coming console all the way back. Also took the hood scoop from the 67 Super Stock Dodge, because that scoop's laying around. So we cut it to fit this hood. It's got a big inch Hemi in it. It's got their four speed in it. Now, I played around underneath, because the guy's gonna own it. And no one can really see it. So it's got an altercation front and rear suspension, tubular, K frame in the What's front. altercation? Altercation you... is a company, uh, Riley okay. Motorsport, okay. and he has suspension solutions for these Chryslers. The Chrysler front suspension is fantastic. The whole K frame that holds the engine and all the front suspension is held onto the body by four big bolts. And when you use his, it replaces the torsion bar, gives you tubular upper and lower A arms, adjustable okay. coilovers, and a rack. And by default, just because of the difference in the products, it also takes about 90 pounds off the nose, wow. which is great. Yeah. So in the rear, if you're street driving, you can keep the leaf springs. There's nothing evil about leaf springs, right. but we mini tubbed the car and we put in his rear, which is like a uh, triangulated four link with adjustable coilover. So a little nicer ride than the leaf though. Right. And I can set the ride height with the coilover front and rear. Right. So we have a great suspension under it for driving and enjoying. It's got a big thumping Hemi in it and a stick. And the four speed though, underneath the car, you look at it and it looks like the A833 Hemi four speed. It is a carbon copy exterior, but it's a transmission built by Jamie Passon of Passon Performance. Okay. And first things off, the outside case isn't made of cast iron. It's made of aluminum, but what's great so is the guts. It shaves a ton of weight. It shaves a ton of weight, but the guts are a three plus one. Third gears one to one, fourth gears overdrive. Those of you not knowing the transmission tunnels in Chrysler's, they're extremely narrow. And if you're gonna buy a five or a six speed, you are going to be cutting the trans tunnel up. Can we do that at this shop? Yes, we can. But there was no need to. You just right. bolt that tranny in, you're done. Because the fourth gear acts as an overdrive, it's an overdrive. so on the freeway, you it's, can roll along fine. and you're not banging the- It's fine, I don't need five gears, you know why? Because I got a crap ton of torque. It's right. a 528 inch Hemi. I don't wow. need 80 speeds to get rolling. What drove me nuts is the factory gauge cluster. It has four small gauges and a big speedo and attack. And the speedo and the attack is offset to the center of the steering column. Now I know why, because the gauges back then didn't have a lot of tech 
they needed room. Yeah. And the tachometer, the, the tick tock tack, literally is like that deep. There's a big brace holding the steering column in. So a tack and a speedo that's super deep would hit that brace. This is courtesy of Shannon at Redline Gauge Works. The uh -huh. gauge stop there. So what we did was take the plastic piece and the pot metal frame behind it, cut it up and moved it around so that there's two on this side, two on this side and the big two in the middle. And we aircraft epoxied the whole unit together. And then Kelly and I were model makers by, by trade. We met doing prototype work for Mattel. And I found the sheet styrene that matches. And this is actually a piece of plastic that you can buy really? to build sides of buildings for model railroad buildings, scale model railroad buildings. So each one of these rings are handmade. <laughs> wow. And then the gauges from factory are angled. So when these two came over here, we had to invert them and angle them back this way. And wow, then dude. each one of these letters, they're cut off of the original dash sanded paper thin and then bonded on god so this is it looks made. like it was it yep. looks like that's how it came from right. chrysler yep but more importantly sparkly steering wheel <laughs> this is so perfect for I in here it's so, so perfect per so for perfect. this car because the whole set of this car i mean to the untrained eye it looks like a car that like you took a 68 charger and somewhere around 72 you made it this, the big yeah. fat rear tires, right. the sparkly well, wheel. But the big, the big tires and stuff were happening in 68, 69. Yeah, yeah. Now, this was a, almost a prototype at the time. This is one of the first vintage air controllers for AC up where the factory controls were. So it's got vintage air in it. It's got an overdrive, cleverly decided, disguised as the factory. The owner of this is Carl Williams. So if you look, if your cameraman goes to the center of the rear wheel, I had decals made that copy the Mark Williams, but it's a KW and it says <laughs> Carl Williams. <laughs> that's cool. So, really in, cool. infinite detail all the time. Always. No, that's the thing about your cars. It's always fun walking through them with you because unless you know this car inside out, oh, you're you wouldn't miss 90% of what's done here. Oh, yeah. All you're going to see is like, ooh, neat charger. Yeah, you'd you're have no miss idea. miss everything. If you weren't a Chrysler guy, you'd have no idea the literal months, nope. months of work creating that gauge like cluster. hundreds and hundreds of hours oh, yeah. just in the gauge cluster, cluster. alone yeah huh? yeah yep. but it looks way nicer and you can actually see the get when you'll see when you get in here you can see every gauge absolutely perfectly clear yeah. shot to them yeah i say we uh go for a drive oh we go for a drive I see. <laughs> okay not even a touch of the gas pedal no <laughs> and it's a carbureted car right yeah driving this car right now dude I've seen this car for years so leave it here get it up to a little more speed and I'll put it in forth. I can't believe how smooth this car is looking at this car I would expect it to be 
kind of rowdy, unruly, and, like yeah. like like a drag car, because it, it just looks well, like it's got the power to do that. No, I get it, dude, yeah. but it but it doesn't like just show you that that's all it has. Like it it has this. And you could actually drive this car and cruise and enjoy this car. Hours. Holy it's, hell, though, man, he's a tall kid because <laughs> I'm sitting down low here. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's made for him. It just feels right is what it feels like. I don't know another way to say it. It just feels right. Mm -hmm. Even the lope, it's not so much that you're rattling yeah, but it's around. You're an old muscle but car. But you know you're an old muscle car, yeah. man. That's what we wanted. And boy, do these gauges just sit right, dude. Aw, oh, dude, thank you for letting me do this, man. This is this is two of your cars I've had the pleasure of driving now. Yeah. All right, you guys, so what do you think of uh, my friend Steve Strope's 68 Charger? I mean, you know, everything they build up here at Pure Vision Design is, they just build on a different level, in my opinion. The concept of carrying a theme all the way through the car, I'm not gonna say he's the only one that does it, but I just love, love what Steve and his crew does. This car, I remember seeing them building this and, you know, get it to this point where it's been on the road for, gosh, five years now, and to actually go get to drive it for a few minutes myself. I'm just kind of blown away right now. And anyways, you guys have asked for more Mopar and it doesn't get more Mopar than this. So hope you guys had fun in this episode. You got to know I had a blast and we will be shooting some other Steve cars, including that's right. The fair lane right there. We will be shooting that car sometime soon. So. As always, you guys, thanks for hanging and watching and supporting what we're up to. You know I appreciate it, and I will see you in the next episode. All right, man. Later.